Hello, this is a series of discussions on the topic of steady state error in the, in the that's a subtopic in the general area of uh, control systems. And the subtitle of this is uh, from the Rolling Stones song, You Can't Always Get What You Want. Uh, this is covered in Chapter 6 of my textbook, Control Systems Engineering, A Practical Approach, uh, available from uh, me, the author, by writing to the email address that's uh, given below. So first I want to uh, describe what steady state error is uh, and give a practical example of that. There's more than one way to uh, describe steady state error, to explain it, and it's often a puzzle to people why this even arises. Uh, so uh, as an example here, I'm using uh, a cruise control system on a car, uh, which is a regulator loop. Uh, the, there's a discussion on this uh, in this um, a playlist on the difference between a uh, positioner loop and a regulator loop. Steady state error actually applies to both loops, as we shall see. So I'm going to use uh, initially a regulator loop to describe this, but then the explanation is simpler with a positioner loop, um, and I'll give that also. Uh, so to start out with, we have a little car, and uh, this is an, an old Fiat 500. Uh, which certainly would not have a cruise control, but we'll just pretend like it does. <clears throat> this car does not go very fast. Uh, and um, what I've shown is the way that a regulator loop works. <clears throat> uh, when you uh, engage the cruise control system of the car, <clears throat> you get the car up to the speed that you want the car to travel at, and then you uh, engage the cruise control. You say uh, you basically push a button or uh, well push a button <clears throat> and say I want the car to continue to go with this speed. So if you are in uh, uh, on flat ground uh, what happens is when you engage the uh, the system all of the current values uh, for various uh, parameters around the loop <clears throat> are uh, remembered and those become your reference values. They are they're not zero, but they become zeros for the purpose, purpose of the loop. And the loop actually controls as deviations around those uh, values. Okay? Uh, so, for instance, what I have here is an example. We're going along on flat ground. <clears throat> uh, the car is going 45 uh, kilometers per hour. That is our actual value. Uh, we want it to go 45 kilometers per hour. So what we've done is we sped up to uh, 45 kilometers per hour, and then we've engaged the cruise control. Well, at that point in time, uh, well, let's look at the loop a little bit and see what's going on. Uh, our controller talks to the throttle valve of the car, and the throttle valve actually has a position that goes between 0 and 100%. <clears throat> and it just so happens that uh, in this particular case, the throttle valve is at 65%. So when I'm going 45 miles an hour on flat ground, uh, the throttle valve is at 65%. That's what makes the car go uh, 45 kilometers per hour. And the throttle valve uh, sends gas and fuel to the engine, and the engine sends uh, torque to the uh, back wheels of the car, and uh, that uh, uh, pushes against the pavement and provides the thrust force forward uh, that keeps the car going at 45 miles an hour. Now the car has to fight, of course, air resistance and uh, also a rolling resistance of the car. <clears throat> and so your, your system is in equilibrium. And even though all of these values here, like for instance, the throttle valve is 65%, a certain amount of fuel and air going to the engine, uh, the torque going to the back wheels or the thrust of the wheels on the pavement, they're not zero. The regulator loop remembers those as zero and basically controls the speed of the car around those values, those reference values. So the car will proceed, will continue to proceed at that speed, uh, 45 miles an hour. If for some reason it speeds up or slows down, then the throttle valve will change automatically to uh, uh, compensate for that. Uh, if the car starts going too fast, the throttle valve will close, the car will go slower. If the car starts going slower, the throttle valve will open, it'll speed the car up, and the car will basically uh, continue to uh, travel at 45 miles an hour. So inside the loop, actually at 45 miles an hour, the way it works is everything is zero, 
And then these values, these non-zero values, are remembered uh, just as your, as your reference values. So everything's fine. But here where we live in San Luis Obispo, there's actually, uh, right behind the town, there's a range of mountains. And there's a very steep uh, incline going up called the Cuesta Grade. Uh, so uh, what happens is uh, when you uh, enter into, well, first let me say this, let's just... Uh, a step back and look at it uh, from an overall perspective. If I want to go 45 miles an hour up this grade, the throttle valve is going to have to be open higher than 65 miles an hour. Okay, that's obvious. Uh, 45 miles an hour, or not miles an hour, sorry, kilometers per hour on the flat um, uh, has a throttle opening of 65 percent. But when I start going up the grade, I have, again, at 45 miles an hour, I have the uh, resistance, the air resistance, and I have the rolling resistance. And they haven't changed, at least not substantially. But the other thing that I have going on here is that I'm actually uh, 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 investing in a, a gravitational potential energy. I'm adding that to the car. So the higher the car goes up, uh, the more uh, gravitational potential energy I've stored in the car. <clears throat> so I'm going to have to have more fuel, more energy going into the engine and a greater push on the ground to keep myself going at 45 miles an hour. <clears throat> Unfortunately, though, what happens is uh, since I have only a um, proportional controller, you can have other types of controllers. You can have a so this is a P only controller. Uh, I can have a PI controller, a PD controller, or a PID controller, but since I only have a constant here, <clears throat> uh, that means that this 65% uh, 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 percent opening is tied to the 45 kilometers per hour. So um, what will happen is if I start going up the grade and uh, the uh, throttle valve returns to 65%, the car will not go 45 miles an hour or 45 kilometers per hour. It will slow down because the throttle valve is not high enough to uh, keep uh, the car going at uh, 45 kilometers per hour. It was on the flat, but it's not when you're going up the grade. <clears throat> so what happens is this. The car does slow down, and because it slowed down, the throttle valve will... Um, open higher, and that's shown in this, uh, this second uh, part of this explanation here. <clears throat> so the car slows down, and uh, I've shown it slowing down four kilometers per hour, and what happens is this comes back this four kilometers per hour, and then gets added into the 45 kilometers per hour, and I wind up with, uh, uh, well, it was 41, and I subtract it from the 45, and I wind up with an error of 4 kilometers per hour. That causes the uh, valve opening of the throttle uh, to increase, to make the car speed up. But if you sped the car back up to 45 kilometers per hour, the throttle valve would go to 65%, and the car would go slower again. So what happens is uh, that the car actually settles out on the incline at a slower speed than desired so that the throttle valve will open higher than it was when you were on the flat. And this, there's, a, there's an equilibrium here. Uh, you have to have this uh, speed lower than what you wish for in order to have your throttle valve open higher than it was when you set it initially on the flat. So this actually has a name. That uh, difference in speed is called droop in the controls world. Uh, and that creates the error that's greater than zero kilometers per hour so that the throttle valve will open uh, higher than uh, uh, it was on the flat. The car will not go uh, 45 kilometers per hour. It will have to go something less than that to hold that throttle valve open uh, uh, more than it was open on the flat. And this is actually uh, called droop. That's a specialized term for it, but it's also, in the more general sense, uh, called steady state error. Okay, I'm almost at 10 minutes, so I'm going to stop here and start uh, continue with the explanation in part two.